In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a particle transition. Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and we got a great tutorial today. We're gonna to be playing with particles and revealing on logos or text or whatever you wanna do. So this, there's more than one use for this other than text. Uh, however, you will need a plugin from Red Giant called Trap Code Particular to follow along with this tutorial. If you don't have this uh, plugin, you're kind of not going to be able to follow along at all. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and check out Trap Code Particular from RedGiant.com. But for those of us who are ready, let's go ahead and jump into a new composition. The only thing I have in this composition is text. And once you have your text or logo or whatever graphic that you want to put in there that you want to have it revealed to particles, all you have to do is select that layer, go up to Layer, pre-compose and we can call this one uh, tut placeholder and we'll click OK and then once again we will pre-compose this again so pre-compose the new comp and we'll just come over here and call it tut placeholder reveal and we'll click OK so now we'll go ahead and double click on our placeholder reveal and we'll just see our tut placeholder so make sure the placeholder is selected and go up to the rectangle tool zoom it out a little bit and just draw out like a nice thin rectangle like this and hit M on your keyboard to bring up the mask path and add a keyframe for mask path. And maybe set this keyframe to be about like two seconds here. So this should be okay. And then go to like maybe five or six seconds and just go ahead and make sure to select the entire mask. So click off it and select mask one and just drag this all the way across the entire composition just like that. And hit F on your keyboard to bring up the mask feather, feather it out to maybe like 40 pixels or so. So you kind of have this going on right here, which is cool. And let's go back into our main composition here and let's just bring in our tut placeholder, bring it underneath our reveal. And as you see, we have really nothing going on with this one. And with our placeholder, go up to effect transition, linear wipe, set the angle wipe to negative 90 degrees and increase the feather to about 30 or so. And once again, go to two seconds, add a keyframe for transition completion, set it to 100%, go to about five seconds and go ahead and set this down to 0%. So now we just have this easy reveal in here and we can turn our placeholder reveal back on for now. And then let's go up to layer, new, solid, and we can call this one particles. And go up to effect, trap code, particular. And this is where the plugin comes into play. And let's set the emitter type to layer. And let's go to the layer emitter and set the layer to Tut placeholder reveal and a light should have been created and set the layer sampling to particle birth time. And you probably won't see any particles, but let's go to the particles per second and let's set this up to 1 million. So just add one and add all the zeros that you can in there. And boom, there's a ton of particles in there. And we're starting to actually see that the particles take in form of our text or your logo or whatever you're using for a placeholder. And now we can start really playing with these settings and getting these beautiful, uh, you know, particles. So let's go into the actual, you know, emitter here and play with the velocity by touch. So maybe set the velocity down to five so they're not going all over the place. Uh, maybe even set the velocity random to maybe about 30. You know, kind of just play with those settings. Those really don't matter too much, but go ahead and you know, adjust those as you see fit. Maybe we'll set the direction to outwards. Maybe we'll go to the X rotation and set this to 50. It may set the Y rotation to like, you know, 340 or so. Uh, and of course, these are just like little small variations that you can make in the particles. It's not going to do way too much, but it does look cool. So let's go ahead and close up the emitter for now. And let's go into the particle, right? And of course, you can turn off your uh, placeholder here. And uh, maybe we'll just turn the, this one off at the bottom so we can kind of just see the particles as they are. And we'll go into make sure the particle over here and set the particle uh, per second down to one. Uh, maybe set the life random to 100. And we'll go into this uh, serious feather, set that down to zero. Go into the size, we'll set this down to one as well. Uh, so boom, we got very little bit of particles in there, but it looks really nice. We'll go into size random, maybe set this up to like 10 or so, maybe 20, just kind of vary the particle size just by a little bit. Go to the opacity random, maybe set this to like 70. So, you know, that's pretty interesting. So let's go into the physics. Let's set the gravity to like negative 500. Now you might want to play which direction, which direction that's going to come from. This is up to you. Let's go into the air and we'll set the air resistance to about three. So have a little bit more control over that. 
and we'll go into the wind X and maybe set this to like negative 150. And you can of course play with the wind direction. I highly suggest that. Don't just take my settings for it. And we'll go to like the wind Y, maybe set this to 90 degrees. And maybe we can just jump up the wind Z by a little bit. So, you know, of course, just play with this a little bit. My settings aren't the best, you know, they're just what I like and your settings should be for what you like. So go into the turbulence field and this is really where some of this crazy stuff begins to happen. So let's set the effect size to about 12. And of course, to play with this as well. And, and you see you get variated sizes here and those look cool. And maybe we'll set the uh, effect position to like 450 and see what happens here. It looks nice. And maybe we can go ahead and turn our text on at the bottom real fast, kind of see what's happening. And go to the uh, fade in time, set this down to like 0.1 and then go to like the scale and we'll set this to like, you know, 14 or something. Uh, see what happens there, you know, it looks cool. And now we'll go ahead and really juice up these particles and make this really come to life. So go to the auxiliary system, set the emit to continuously. And now we got some really crazy things going on here. So we'll go to the size, set this down to one so we don't have like these big particles and you know, it blends in there very nice. And we'll go into the particles per second, set this to like 100. Now if you, if you really increase the particles per second, you know, it's gonna really take a toll on your computer. So be very careful with the particles per second. Don't set this up to like 1 million or something. Uh, just keep that in mind when you do that. And if we set the color from main to 100, it'll just take the color of the actual placeholder. Uh, we'll keep that at that for now. We'll go ahead and talk about how we can have the particles be the same exact color of the placeholder in a second. Um, and maybe set the blend mode down to screen, but then we should be good to go. And then go into the rendering and go into the motion blur and just set this to on the motion blur. And you know, that should be good. If it's too much motion blur or whatever, go ahead and lower down your shutter angle, but we'll keep it at that and we should be good to go with this. And now let's talk about how can we actually take the color of the placeholder. So what we can do is go into the actual placeholder here and go up to select the text layer or whatever logo layer, whatever you're using. Maybe you don't have to do this, but go up to effect generate uh, four color gradient. Now, of course, your you know placeholder might already have color on it, so you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to show you guys really quick uh, what this can look like. So go back into our main comp over here, and you'll see in a second that the particles take the color of the text, and that's how that works out. So that's pretty cool. So I have it down to third quality real fast, but at the end of our animation, the particles kind of just like linger there, and they kind of just sit there. And I don't know, that, that might be a good thing, but let's go back into the particles real fast. And let's go into our physics and let's go ahead and just kind of animate these uh, particles at the end to kind of move by a little bit. So go to like, you know, four seconds or whatever towards the end of your animation. So at wind Y, let's go ahead and add a keyframe at like four seconds or like more towards the end. So maybe like five seconds, we'll add that uh, keyframe and we'll go to like, you know, six seconds or something and we'll bring the wind Y down to like negative. So what's going to happen? is the particles are going to start to fly up by a little bit towards the end of this animation and they're just not going to sit there and you know have a lot, little bit of that movement so it looks nice and of course bring this keyframe out to the end of the complete animation so this is looking good and you should be good to go however if you want your actual you know placeholder to be white or you know a certain color instead of the color of the actual particles go into the bottom layer down here go up to effect generate fill and I obviously if we go to the color here, we can change it to whatever color that we want. And we still have the particle colors. And you know, that looks really awesome. Looks really nice. Now, if we play with the linear wipe here, we can add, you know, adjust both these keyframes and bring them back in time. You know, of course you can play with the timing of the wipe here. Just so maybe you want some like more lead room with the uh, actual particles. So you can just go ahead and move these two keyframes back and forth for the linear wipe. And that should be good to go. And and if you were following along with this tutorial, you should have gotten something very similar uh, to this, not the black screen, but the text here. And you know, it looks really nice and it's a very easy thing to do. So I hope you guys found this tutorial very helpful. And if you guys did enjoy the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit us up on our social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope